بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم Your Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan, Vice President, Deputy Prime Minister, and Chairman of the Presidential Court of the United Arab Emirates, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, welcome to Abu Dhabi, to the United Arab Emirates, and to ADEPEC. ADEPEC brings together the leaders who must shape a future where energy is accessible, secure, affordable, sustainable, and decarbonized. And before I begin, let me just say this. The last time I addressed the energy industry in March at Sarah Week, I had some mixed feelings. But after thinking long and hard, I decided I had to be there. I decided I had to be there because I firmly believe that just as this industry has enabled human prosperity in the past, it will be essential to solving the global challenges we all face today. And as COP28 president, I have met with many people around the world representing different backgrounds, different sectors, and different industries. And my key takeaways from these engagements only reinforced my full conviction about the central importance of full inclusivity. Everyone must be at the table to make the transformational progress needed, especially the energy industry. No other industry has the same ability to manage complexity, depth of knowledge, engineering talent, capital, technology, and scale that is needed for the task at hand. And that's why today I stand before you filled with hope, optimism, and confidence that this industry can step up and make a meaningful contribution to tangible, sustainable progress. Here is the challenge we face. All the indicators are telling us that we have to change course to address climate change. The IPCC has calculated that the world must reduce emissions by at least 43% over the next seven years in order for us to keep 1.5 within reach. That is our North Star. It is, in fact, our only destination. It is simply acknowledging and respecting the science. And we must do this while also ensuring human prosperity by meeting the energy needs of the planet's growing population. In fact, we need a system-wide holistic transformation of entire economies. Economies that currently run on the equivalent of 250 million barrels of oil, gas, and coal every single day. These are barrels that need to be either replaced or decarbonized to create a proper, yet responsible, pro-climate, pro-growth future. It is a monumental task. It is also a historic opportunity for growth and innovation. It represents the largest economic opportunity since the first industrial revolution. In fact, we already know that this is already actually happening. Clean tech investments reached record of $1.7 trillion last year. A record of 440 gigawatts of renewable energy are set to be added to the grid only this year, in 2023. Electric vehicle sales have tripled in the past three years. And as I've said before, 
a phase down of fossil fuels is inevitable. In fact, it's essential. Yet, this must be part of a comprehensive energy transition plan that is fair, that is fast, just, orderly, equitable, and responsible. This energy transition must be well managed and carefully considered. There are three key areas that I believe can have the biggest impact in the shortest period of time. The first is curbing emissions from the production of energy. And I have called on all IOCs and NOCs to step up and align around net zero by or before 2050. Zero out methane emissions and eliminate routine flooring uh, routine flaring by 2030. And I am very pleased to say that over 20 oil and gas companies, both IOCs and NOCs, representing all continents, have positively answered the call. But you all know that this took time, a lot of effort, and many months of hard work, and I mean hard work, negotiation and collaboration. And I urge everyone to make this commitment at COP28 in Dubai this year. COP28 is a COP where I am calling on everyone to set the highest ambitions and follow through with practical actions to deliver real and tangible results. Second, I believe this industry has a critical role in scaling up renewable energy. We have been calling for renewable energy capacity to be tripled to 11,000 gigawatt by 2030. This goal is now supported by 85% of the world's economies and represent a unique opportunity for this industry to diversify and future-proof its own business models. However, the intermittent nature of renewables means they are not a baseload source of power for heavy emitting industries. This takes us to the third area, decarbonizing hard to abate sectors like steel, cement, aluminum, and heavy transportation. These sectors will require low-carbon solutions, including hydrogen, carbon capture, battery storage, and renewable fuels. We know that solutions exist, and all industries can and must act. But we know that they cannot act alone. Governments should be proactive in setting the right demand signals and dealing with critical issues like permitting. Together, we must overcome the hurdles to scale up and commercialize hydrogen and carbon capture technologies. In addition, we must reimagine the relationship between producers and the heaviest consuming sectors. Since March, I have been convening heavy emitting sectors alongside the energy industry, as well as governments. NGOs, civil society, scientists, technologies, and technologists, and the financial community to help accelerate our drive for real and meaningful decarbonization. COP28 must be the turning point where we begin to get back on track and start our sprint to 2030. And we don't claim that we have all the answers. In fact, nobody has all the answers. But working together, we can lay a solid foundation for a climate positive, economically sustainable future. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, back in March, at Sarah Week in Houston, I said, 
I said, Houston, we have a problem. And today, at Adepic in Abu Dhabi, I say with full confidence, hope, and optimism that this industry can and must help drive the solutions. For too long, this industry has been viewed as part of the problem that is not doing enough, and in some cases, even blocking progress. This is your opportunity to show the world that, in fact, you are central to the solution. This industry can change the global debate. In fact, this industry can change the global outcome. And it is time to silence the skeptics by applying scale, capital, technology to deliver real outcomes and tangible results. It is time to turn rhetoric into results, ambitions into action, pilots into scalable projects. It is time to unite, it is time to act, and it is time to deliver. Thank you once again for being with us, and please join us on this vital journey for humanity. Thank you again.